All right, welcome to lesson 2.06. So today we're going to learn about the power rule derivatives. We're actually going to learn about a couple of other rules as well. Um, and we're going to apply them to take the derivatives of functions in a much more efficient way. So to get started, um, why don't you actually see if you can figure out uh, the power rule. And to do this, go ahead and take the derivatives of these fu functions here. Use the any derivative definition that you'd like. Write down any patterns you notice, and then try and use this pattern um, to determine the derivatives of these functions here. All right. So if you did so, and you used the definition that the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, or any other equivalent definition, what you found is the following. And you probably noticed that there was a little bit of a pattern that you started to see. And you should have actually seen it in your, um, your actual multiplication um, in, the, in the limit. So when you're taking the limit, you're applying, you know, you're taking x plus h, and you're, you know, squaring it here, cubing it here. And you notice that there's a certain term that kind of gets left over, which becomes your derivative, if you will. And if you look at the results that you get, you probably see some patterns as well, right? x cubed became 3x squared. x squared became 2x to the first. x to the first became 1x to the 0, right? x to the 0 being 1. You also found, hey, if I have just some constant function, 7, for example, the slope of that function is always 0 because it's a horizontal line. And so you probably can notice a pattern that if you have any constant function, just any horizontal line, the derivative is going to be 0. The slope is always going to be 0. Okay. So the pattern that you noticed probably got you to be able to find the derivative of x to the fourth, which was 4x to the third. And if you followed up this pattern, you might have guessed that, well, if I'm taking the derivative of a power function, meaning x to some power, whatever that power may be, I'm going to take the power, I'm going to multiply it, and then I'm going to decrease the value of the power by 1. And so what we are noticing is hopefully something that gets you pretty excited, because if you look back at the work that we did on C and D, you'll notice there's no limit being taken. Um, we're actually going to hopefully be able to prove um, a common pattern that occurs so that we don't have to repeatedly take um, these big limits over and over again. Okay, so we're going to look at a series of derivative rules and what they're going to allow us to do is prove some patterns um, for taking the derivative of functions that pop up a lot so that this way when we see these functions we can apply these rules instead of taking the using the limit definition over and over and over again. Now obviously we're going to prove these rules by using the limit definition but we're going to apply them to a really general case. I think you'll see what I mean after we go over this rule. So this is the derivative of a constant function. If f is the function with the constant value c then f prime of x or the derivative of f with respect to x is equal to zero. And this should make sense. Think about some function, say f of x equals five, and that's just a horizontal line through five. What's the slope of that function? Oh, it's zero, right? It's a perfectly flat line. And so the derivative is always going to be equal to zero. So what you can think of is when I say if f is a function with the constant value c, you're thinking f of x is equal to just some constant value c. And if that's the case, well then we know that the derivative f prime of x is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and actually prove this. And if this is one of your first, uh, first times proving something, you'll get kind of an idea of how it's done. So what we start with is what the theorem gives us, basically. It says if f is a function with the constant value c. So if we start with this, we want to show that you end up with this. So we'll let f of x be equal to c, right? Where c is a constant value. OK. 
Okay? And just think about what we want to do. We want to find the derivative. So we'll just apply our definition of a derivative to take the derivative of this function and everything should work out. So I actually think you should do that right now. Um, use the definition of a derivative to take the derivative of our function f and see what you get. So what you can see that I did is that I used the limit definition of the derivative to take the derivative of this constant function. So f of x plus h, well notice that this is a constant function. It doesn't matter what my input variable is. The output's always going to be c. So this is c minus c over h. c minus c is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. So I'm taking the limit of 0 as h approaches 0. Well, that's just 0. And so what I've shown is that the derivative is 0. So in other words, no matter what my constant function is, I will always end up with the derivative equal to 0. So as an example, and I'll just do a quick example over here, if I had the function f of x equals 10, the derivative of this function will be equal to 0 everywhere. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another derivative rule. So this is the big one. Um, this is what's going to make your life a lot easier. So this is derivative rule number two, and what's known as is the derivative of a power function. Now notice that I've said this is for positive powers. We're going to talk about negative powers soon enough, but let's just focus on um, the positive powers for now, and we can include negative powers when we need them. So we'll get there. For now, just positive powers. So if n is a positive integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, and f of x is the function x raised to that power n, then the derivative of f with respect to x is n times x to the n minus 1. So you can see the pattern that we discussed earlier. If I have a power function, the derivative will be a function very similar, where the exponent has decreased by 1 from n to n minus 1, and I am multiplying by that power in the, uh, as the coefficient. Now we could go about proving that this is true for any power function, x to the n, where n is a positive integer, much the same way that we proved the first derivative rule. You start out with what we're given, and we'll apply the definition of a limit, uh, sorry, the definition of a derivative to actually show that this will be the case. I'm not going to do that in the video. What I want you to do is give it a try on your own. I'll give you a hint here. You'll want to incorporate the use of the binomial theorem. So you could go on Google or in your book somewhere. I'm sure it's in there. Go to the glossary and search binomial theorem, and um, you might uh, see where you can apply that uh, in the proof. And if you want to check uh, your proof, um, you can take a look at page 118. They go through the proof there, and I will discuss it uh, in class when we meet. But for now, let's just take a look at a quick example. So let's take the derivative with respect to x of x to the sixth, right? Notice I'm using slightly different notation here. You could think of it similarly. I have the function x to the sixth, and I want to find the derivative of it. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of x to the sixth, and I can use this rule here. I am now going to have the exponent of 6 outside as the coefficient, and I'm going to decrease the exponent by 1. So this would be 6x to the 6 minus 1, which would be 6x to the 5th. And, you know, I don't really need to do the 6 minus 1 piece here. I just wanted to make sure you saw where that was coming from. So the derivative of x to the 6th is 6x to the 5th which just to make sure we understand what that means is that anywhere along this function x to the sixth you can find the slope at any point using this function 6x to the fifth which I think is pretty amazing and incredible notice what's really special is that there was no limit used here right we will use the limit once to prove that this is the case the limit definition will only need to be used once and then from now on we can utilize this rule So here we are with derivative rule number three. This is called the constant multiple rule. And this one is pretty straightforward and, and easy to use. But there's one thing that you may not have seen before, and this is the idea of using um, the letter u to talk about a function. 
A lot of the times when we're actually proving things or working through a question or a problem, we'll be dealing with functions that are named f or g, right? And so in the, the definitions, we're going to want to use some different letters to denote functions so that we don't confuse them with each other when we're applying them. So for this situation, we're going to use, start, start slowly, we'll use u of x. So if, and there are three conditions here, if u of x is a differentiable function of x, meaning u is a function of x, I can take its derivative, c is a constant, and number three, we have some function, f of x, which is this constant times u, then the derivative of f with respect to x means that I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of this function here, c times u of x, and what that is is just the derivative of the function u of x times whatever the constant is. In other words, I'm pulling the constant out of the derivative. So notice how that worked. I'm, basically what it's saying is I can factor out the constant when I'm taking the derivative. So to put this really simply, if I'm taking the derivative of this function f of x, I just need to take the derivative of the function u and I can factor out any of the constants and multiply them at the end. So let's take a look at it in an easy example here. I want to take the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared. So notice I can em uh, employ rule number 3 here. I have some function that's differentiable in terms of x, x squared. I have a constant and I'm multiplying the two together. When I take the derivative, I can pull out the constant, take the derivative of the function of x, and then multiply them together at the end. So what this is equal to is just 3 times the derivative with respect to x of x squared. Well, we just learned how to take the derivative of a power function, right? The derivative of x squared is just going to be 2x. So I have 3 times 2x, and that's going to be 6x. Okay. All right. Let's move on. We have one more to talk about. Okay, derivative rule number four, the sum and difference rule. I still remember uh, learning this when I was in high school, and uh, it's stuck with me since then. So I'm going to try and uh, deliver it in the same way, so hopefully you will not uh, forget it either. So if we have two functions, if u of x and v of x are differentiable functions of x, then there are two things. The first, the derivative of their sum is the sum of their respective derivatives. Okay, sounds confusing at first. Let's think about what this means. The derivative of their sum, well, what's their sum? It's going to be u of x plus v of x, and we're going to take the derivative of that. So the derivative with respect to x of u of x plus v of x. Okay, that's what this first part says. The derivative of their sum, so their sum here, and taking the derivative, is, in other words, is equal to the sum of their respective derivatives. Well, notice how this is switched around. This is the sum of their respective derivatives. So that means I'm taking the derivative of each and then adding them together. So let's go ahead and write that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of u of x, and I'm going to add it to the derivative with respect to x of v of x. Okay. So the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. That's the sum rule. The difference rule is very similar. The derivative of their differences, of u and v, is the difference of their respective derivatives. So again, the derivative of their differences, meaning I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of their differences. So the difference is going to be u of x minus v of x. 
And certainly I could write it the other way around, v of x minus u of x, but that would just change how I said the next part, is, is equal to the difference of their respective derivatives. So here, I'm actually going to be taking the difference after I take the derivatives. So I'll take the respective derivatives. And here, it's important which one comes first, right? So as you can see, the derivative of the difference is equal to the difference of the derivatives. And this is going to come quite in handy. Again, you could prove this um, pretty easily, right? What you'd want to do is you'd want to start by taking the derivative of these two functions together, applying the limit definition, going through that and trying to use some of the limit properties to show that you can actually have the limit definition of a derivative for each one independently just added together. So the uh, proof of this can be found on page 119. I encourage you to try it on your own um, and come in and talk about it a little bit. It's actually quite simple, um, but its usefulness is very, very, very uh, apparent. Um, if I have kind of a complex function with a bunch of pieces added or subtracted from one another, I can apply this rule um, to make the, taking the derivative of that function a heck of a lot easier. So let's go ahead and work through a couple problems to see how this can be manifested. All right, so here are a couple problems. What I want you to do is pause the video and try these on your own first. Um, see if you can apply the rules that we just found. Even if you struggle with it a little bit, that's okay. Having tried it will make it a lot more clear when we go over it together. Okay, so for this first one, we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x if y is equal to 5x to the sixth. So what I want to do is take the derivative with respect to x of 5x to the sixth. Well, first rule I can utilize is the constant multiple rule. Because I have some function of x, x to the sixth, I know how to take the derivative of that, and I have some constant 5, so I can pull that out and then take the derivative of x to the sixth. Derivative of x to the sixth is going to be 6x to the fifth. So I'll have 5 times 5x to the fifth, and that's just going to be 25x to the fifth. All right. If that helped clear up some things, uh, some questions you might have about number two, go ahead and pause, retry it, and then we'll talk. Okay, so I want to find the p prime of t. And so what I want to do is I want to differentiate or take the derivative of this whole function here. To make this kind of the notation a little easier, I'm going to refer to d prime of t as the derivative of p with respect to t. Okay? So the derivative of p with respect to t is taking the derivative of this whole thing with respect to t. So t cubed plus 6t squared minus 5 thirds t plus 16. Okay, well if I'm taking the derivative of this whole thing, and let me just make this clear, I said with respect to t, that's because the variable that I'm concerning myself with is t here. So this will become uh, very useful, eventually we'll have more variables, and so it'll be important which one I'm taking the derivative of. So it's the derivative of this whole thing here with respect to t. And there's a lot of things going on here. So I can make uh, use of my sum and difference rule. So I have a bunch of things being either added or subtracted, which means that I can actually take the derivative of each individually and then add and subtract at the end. So this will be equal to the derivative with respect to t of t cubed plus the derivative with respect to t of 6t squared 
minus the derivative with respect to t of 5 thirds t plus the derivative with respect to t of 16. All right, and now I can go through, and these should be pretty quick. The derivative of t cubed is going to be 3t squared plus the derivative of 6t squared is going to be, well, notice here I can pull out the 6, so I'm just going to take the derivative of t squared and then multiply by 6 at the end. Derivative of t squared is going to be 2t, so I have 6 times 2t, or 12t, minus, again here I can pull out the 5 thirds, derivative of t to the first power, well this well, notice that I'm just decreasing the exponent by 1, so it goes from an exponent of 1 to an exponent of 0, and anything to the 0th power is 1. So I'm just left with 5 thirds times the derivative of 1, which is 1, so I just have 5 thirds, plus the derivative with respect to t of 16, and we talked about this, the constant uh, function is going to have a derivative of 0, so this part goes to 0. I'll just make sure we see that. And so the derivative of p with respect to t is this function right here. So I can say that p prime of t, the derivative of p, is 3t squared plus 12t minus 5 thirds. So now that you've seen a couple of examples, tried a couple, what you really need to do is practice. It'll feel really kind of weird and cumbersome at first, but once you practice a good amount, these will be second nature to you, and it actually won't even take nearly as long. You won't have to, you know, you'll see a function like this, and you'll immediately be able to go through and apply each of the rules, probably in one step. Um, but for now, we want to practice making sure we know what we're doing one step uh, at a time and make sure that our function that we get for the derivative is uh, exactly correct because we don't want to make any errors. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is that even if this is taking you a little while, know how much quicker it is than taking the limit of all of these different uh, functions. I mean, just imagine applying your limit definition here. This would be absolutely miserable. So here are some for you to try, and we'll talk about them uh, tomorrow.